there are two possible paths that the S&P could be taking over the next couple of months. The first one's about 60% likely, and the second one's about 40% likely. Today is July 29th, and the market has come down from the highs about 5% over the last few weeks. And it's pretty much following the path of the 49-week cycle, which indicates a decline until the end of the month. It could also be the 1st or 2nd of August, if it's off by a day. And since there's an extremely important meeting uh, decision by the Fed on Wednesday, it's probably going to be extremely volatile, obviously, after that. Now, the first path is the same path we've been anticipating, which was it makes a low around the Fed meeting, and then it has a rally until the 9th, between the 9th and the 13th of August, and that rally is meaningful enough to come close to the highs that we just made on the 16th, on the 17th of um, uh, July. And then we have a big break from the middle of August down until September 12th, possibly having another low early October. And that's probably the more likely scenario. However, the 49-week cycle does have several iterations. Uh, two times ago and last year, one of them goes into the 2nd of August as a low before it bounces, and the other one has a low on the 31st of, uh, of July, which would be Wednesday. Now, if the Fed meeting turns out to be initially bearish, then that would mean that the decline that started on July 17th is a five-wave decline because we've already seen a one, two, three, or an ABC down, and we could be either in a fourth wave or some sort of a bottoming phase before a B wave rally. If indeed this is a fourth wave, the fifth wave would be large enough to take out the lows of the uh, 5430 area and go down into the 5350 area. And that would indicate that the market will not make a new high and that any bounces after that will be minor and that, that the, the rally should be shorted, particularly swing traders, that's what you should be thinking about. Okay, Day traders, you might consider possible up moves, but they're very risky at this point until after the 2nd of uh, August, in which case you could have uh, about a week where the market has some strength on the upside. But depending on how severe the decline is going into and slightly after the Fed meeting, the, uh, the cha it changes the probabilities to that 40% chance that the market is more bearish. Now, why do I say that? Well, one of the cycles we're looking at is 26.18 years, and it's roughly the 1998 high. That high in 1998 came out July 17th, interestingly enough. So if the cycle is actually starting there, instead of uh, a month earlier, which is what we had anticipated, the decline is already in progress and it will unfold more dramatically soon than we anticipated. So one has to be prepared for the possibility that we'll see a down move that's fairly dramatic this week. Now, the 49-week cycle does not diminish that possibility. It in indicates even this week before the Fed meeting and maybe even enter after it, we could have two or three days down. Today's action on Monday has been mild and moderate and hasn't been able to muster up much strength. You'd expect until the Fed meeting nothing's going to happen, but that's not true. It actually might start going down over the next few days more dramatically and even after the Fed uh, announcement. Okay, So this is very uh, critical because the decline in 1998, which is what we've been looking for anyway, but if it's already started, then it will be uh, more than 10%. That one was considerably larger than 10%. Okay. The other thing that's very important here is there's another cycle that we haven't talked about, which is 34 years, and it's three times 11 and a third years, which is an astrological thing. It's, uh, it's important, and it also is in there, and it also has the same pattern of a high in July. That one came in around the 20th of July, and a low in 1990 in October. So the fairly large decline is possible during this time. Now, the, def the definitive distinction as to which will happen, whether we're going to have a mild 10% correction or a bigger correction, is based upon what happens around the Fed meeting and whether we break into the 5300 area before any rally, and that the rally that comes after, which probably will still happen into the 9th or the 13th or 14th of, um, 
uh, of August, that one, if that one is very minor, then it says we're in trouble, market's going you know, considerably lower over the next weeks. All right. The reason I'm bringing this up is the first break of 5% was larger than the 49-week cycle necessarily implied, but it's only a little bit larger. It's like uh, 1% more. So it's not yet clear whether or not we're going to see the big thing. Um, and we'll know over the next two weeks clearly whether the market's going to have a big break or it's just a, a, a minor kind of pullback into uh, mid-September. Uh, minor pullback, meaning 10%. All right. That's pretty much the story. Now, we're also definitely having our next Trade Forecast Mastery Masterclass starting on August 11th. Make a note of that date. And we have an additional uh, technique that we're going to be teaching along with the forecasting techniques and two mechanical trading systems that we include in the course. We have a third one. We call it the six point system. And the timing points are incredibly accurate for short term traders, for day traders, for long term traders, for intermediate term traders. We have three different time frames that we use the same basic um, principles. And it includes a little bit of astrology for those who like astrology. But the precision has been very, very strong. I also wanted to bring up, we have a Discord group associated with the uh, students who have taken the class over the year, uh, last year or so. And I am incredibly impressed by the coherence and the intelligence of the students and how really helpful they are to each other. And from what I've heard from them, many of them consider this is the best group they've ever been in. And I want you to let you know that, that there's a whole community of people that have learned this knowledge and that are working together, many of which have improved their results significantly. People who are feeling unconfident are now feeling confident. People who are doing well are doing better. It's been a, a value add for most everyone, including some very, very successful traders who came into it, knowing quite a bit to begin with. 